the been thinking about McDonald's all day. Can't get it off my mind. I can already taste it. Ooh, got my mind on my mouth and my mouth ready for some Mickey D's deal. There's a deal for every moment at McDonald's. Right now, get two of your favorites for just $3.50. Mix and match a classic McChicken, a hot and spicy McChicken, or a juicy McDouble. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with combo meal. Single item at regular price. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 and Ajar and Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 with Brent Martineau and Austin Lane. I love when I beat Austin here. Is he in today? Did I miss a memo? Not that I know of. No, that's all right. Good. Now we got Stuart Weber here. He's back. Back from London. Celebrated the win in London for a long time. Across uh, another continent. As well as should. He should, yes. Uh, way to bring back the W, Weber. Uh, you know, I, I do what I can for the people of this fine city to provide them with that big victory that they've been looking for. And, and I, I, I don't want to say I did it single-handedly, but it sure felt that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did. <laughs> You're the only local person over there, so nobody else can take credit for it. I our, liked it. Our videographer, Ryan, maybe. Uh, that's a good point. He helped as if well. If I was Ryan, I would take credit for some of it. Because that was his first trip to a London, so. How did he do? He did good. Grade Kendall. Um, be nice. He helps us out in high school football, too. I, I would give him a B plus. Oh, wow. Um, That's not a resounding, like, A. No, he did, he did very well. He was just uh, hit with some unforeseen circumstances. Uh, yeah. uh, because of the stadium, we weren't allowed to shoot from behind the end zone which is where we normally will shoot highlights from. Yeah, what, do they just not have a lot of room there? There's no room. Okay. Yeah, there's no room between the back... It's a soccer place. ...back of the end zone and the actual stands. So, had to go from the sideline, which normally is fine because you can maneuver around the many people that are involved on a game day, but not here because you have to be behind the signage about yes. 10 feet behind where you normally would be. But there's still people who aren't behind the signage who are therefore then blocking you, like NFL Films, the broadcast crew, yeah. random people who are just standing there and in your way. They make it, it makes you appreciate uh, shooting games in the United States, I guess, because even though we complain about some things, it's um, they make it more difficult for you over there. Correct. All right. Um, but uh, he battled. He, he learned as he went, got better in the second half, and provided some great quality footage, especially on the Marvin Jones touchdown. He shot that very well. He did. So. Uh, he shot that better than CBS shot it. Yes. I, I heard about that. I, <laughs> I, was, I was kind of watching it live, so I didn't see it as much on the, the TV broadcast of it. Uh, but then I went back and looked. I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah, that was really weird, right? I mean, usually you don't see that. That's, a, that's an odd thing. You see some mistakes here or there if you really look, but you don't usually see, like, the camera guy. And they're wide on the shot for a reason, like, because they don't want that. But um, That's why you have so many different cameras with different responsibilities. Yeah, I don't know what happened, right? Yeah. You never know what happened. Somebody could have either bumped into him, whatever, but, I mean, they zoomed in. It was kind of a weird thing. He's having fish and chips. He dropped the <laughs> he chip. Could've. You know, he's like, oh, there's my French fry. i got to go down and grab it. Oh, there's a play happening. Yeah. Uh, Brent Warno, Austin Lane, welcome up, in. Man? How you doing? I wanted to ask about this, Stuart, okay, according yes. to that game, because I saw a lot of footage yes. um, of bottles being thrown in the crowd. Yes. I'm not sure at a person or at a set of people. I have no idea what was going on. But I'm it was trying to mimic over, Tennessee. Eh, possibly, but it was all over Twitter and everything. What was going on? There? Okay, so the, this was interesting, and, and we you, you hear all about how the crowd is very different in London, right? Yeah. It's different. They, they lose attention really quick sometimes. You like you need to keep giving them good stuff to watch. Otherwise, I mean, you know, they, they watch soccer, though, which isn't but, the most exciting But there's no sport. stoppages. Oh, okay. You know, so, you're so okay. you're so used to following along with the action the entire time, and anything can happen in a split second sure. where you're watching uh, football for them, soccer mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things they do is create uh, beer cup snakes. Mm -hmm. So it's a snake with all the empty beer cups, and... Which, by the way, is a rarity for them because in all, almost, I'm pretty sure every Premier League soccer game, you can't have beer inside the stadium during the match. You have really? to, yeah. And okay. this is this is how it's been at Fulham That's every, every time we've, every time we've and gone. Everything. Yeah. And so you have to, you drink your beer in the concourse. Mm -hmm. You can't take it to your actual seat. So Gosh. before the game and halftime, it's on. Yeah. Like they're going quick, they're going fast, and they're making sure they get their drinks in. But in the NFL games, they were allowed to bring their drinks into the stands. Maybe not after what happened with this game. Um, and so basically, they started making these snakes, and they were running out of cups. <laughs> so the rest of the stadium said, all right, we're going to help you with those cups that you need, sir. 
And so from literally every level of the stadium, they just started chucking the empty cups towards this central location where the beer snake was being made. The gotcha. beer cup snake was being made. So they were simply providing building materials <laughs> And doing their part to make sure these cups got recycled. So it wasn't even bottles like people no, were saying. No, it wasn't saying. bottles. It, it was, was empty plastic, cups. Em empty, okay. plastic, plastic empty, empty cups. cups. Now, okay. now, here's a problem, though, because um, different from a normal NFL stadium, the press box there is, like, right in the middle of the stands. Mm. So, like, fourth quarter, we started getting some cups coming in to the press box <laughs> region. Yeah. Which, by the way, there was also a concert in the press box at halftime. Like, it was part of the press box was this platform they built for some band that had competed on Britain's Got Talent or something. To and perform. To perform. And so it was like in the press box. If It was like 10 feet away from me as I'm trying to edit a video. They're, they're going nuts over there with this concert. Now, did the cups all come together and make one giant snake then? Like Transformers? They were, like what they were on their way to doing so. They So here was, you know how they have like a tunnel where you come out, right? Yeah. From what I could gather, the main goal was to create a snake that went over the tunnel, like an arch. That would have been pretty impressive. An arch over the tunnel. That would yeah, have yeah, been yeah. extremely impressive. Yeah, yeah. That was I mean, the this plan. This is a game within a game here. Yeah, game within I, a game. By the way, it. it was a very boring time in the game for them uh, because <laughs> nothing was happening. Yeah. It was that little lull. Yeah, I remember a lot like of you were tweeting that about it was, that. It was a bit of a lull. Okay. And uh, and they were, I mean, they had some good structure going to this uh, to this arch, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. arch of beer cups. <laughs> and then the fun police came and put a stop to it and said, no, you can't do that. Yeah. And started taking away the cups. Yeah. And it was funny because every time they'd come and take away a giant stack of cups and walk away, the guy who was the mastermind of it would then, like, go under his chair and pull out Back another large cups. stack of them. And everyone <laughs> would just go nuts every time he did it because they were like, yeah. And, but they just came and took them, and hopefully they all got recycled. Well, that's, that's awesome. That's the, the end story. That, that, that is the important part. Lawrence they got recycled. recycled. Lawrence yes. with a shout-out, Victory Friday. Yeah, that'll baby. Victory Friday here on the show. Uh, and now Stuart can celebrate. Stuart, back from London. This is hard-hitting stuff that nobody else had in London. Other I than Stuart Weber. I, try, yeah. I tried to provide a, a sense of the, the feel and the atmosphere in there, since, like you said, we were the only ones there from, it is so from Jacksonville. Different. It is so it's different. It's so very different. By the way, flyover, A+. Plus. Yeah, it looked like it what was they have? Ooh, It was four jets. Yeah. And Any just jets? I, I mean, couldn't okay, tell you. I don't, I don't know if it was I mean, RAF. Bombers, we talking fighter jets. Does that make fighter a jets. difference to you? What kind of Yeah, were? man, I remember one time we had stealth bombers. That was really cool. Those right? like, cool. I've yeah. never seen a stealth bomber We've had a lot of different... Aerial mm -hmm. flyovers. I remember a stealth here. bomber in uh, at Arrowhead. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was really cool. Yeah, uh, I think actually, I, you can't I think really I hear. I remember that yeah, too. That was wild. That was a really good one. Like they, they weren't that loud, but like it's just this massive structure uh, in the in the yeah. air. Just like, and you just don't see it very often. So the key right. with this one, as you know, a lot of these newer soccer stadiums and and what we hope to have here, the roof kind of covers the seating area, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the stadium, you can't tell that it's coming. Until it's there. Until it's on top. Yeah. Until it's right on yeah, top. Yeah, like, like at the bank, you can see it. You can see it coming from away, a little right? while away. But when, when you're in that that area, you cannot tell it's coming. And I don't know if it was uh, from a U.S. base or RAF, the Royal Air Force. I don't know who provided it, but whoever did it, hey, well done. It, cool. That was really good because it, it caught me off, off guard, and it just went, whoa. It you was know, close. The atmosphere over there is very interesting to me. It's kind of like the Super Bowl's. We've covered a lot of Super Bowls now. If you go back, uh, probably some, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 of them. And if you go back like a decade ago, the Super Bowl was very, it felt very corporate. I think it still is corporate, but I think a hell of a lot more fans go to the Super Bowl now for each team. And it started really, the one I remember, it started in MetLife uh, when Seattle showed up. And the Seattle fan base, like, you know, they had, I mean, all that stuff. And it was Seattle, Denver. I think it was, and it was. We thought it was gonna snow. We thought it was gonna be cold. It did the day after, stuff. by the way. Yeah, it did. Snow. So we were trying to leave. Snow, but snowed that was the day the after. First time I remember, it wasn't like just this. Yeah, it got loud here or there. It mm -hmm. was like, but loud was like the halftime show. Yeah, really sure. at Super Bowls. But then, and ever since then, I feel like the games I've gone to Super Bowl, it is loud. Like there's a lot more fans. But the, what I'm talking about is the corporate America. Super Bowls, yeah. the ones that felt like kind of this hush that everybody wasn't there just to root on the teams, but they were really there to go to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. you know, and say, I went to the Super Bowl for however much it cost them to get there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what London feels like. The only difference is everybody's wearing a different color jersey, but yeah. there are moments in that where it's very hush. But then even the players said there were moments that, like on third down, you could feel they were rooting for the Jags. It was quiet on offense, but loud on defense. So it has a feel of a little bit of everything. They, they um, really loved the chains when it came out for that fourth down <laughs> stop late yeah. in the game. Like the measurement. As, as the measurement was coming out, there was just a... 
Whoa. And then they just erupted when it was short. <laughs> and they just went nuts about it. It was like, okay, all right, you like the chains. The chains are cool for you. Do you think there's almost like an over-exaggerated... Well, I mean, it's not even over-exaggerated for us because it was their big kicks, but like for the, the field goal kicks. Do fans go crazy for that because it's the closest thing to our soccer that they have over there is the field goal kicking and, like, the kicking... Uh, the kickoffs and the punts and all that stuff. Yeah, they're pretty familiar with it from a rugby standpoint. Where but, but I'm where saying, like, do they, they, do they like the it. kicks more? They like yeah. it because you're scoring points. Okay. You know? Yeah. They, they like that a, a score is going on the board. Okay. You know? So I think that's that has more to do with it than the similarity to kicking a soccer ball for a penalty kick or what I have you. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it is a cool thing. If you ever get to experience this, it's just different. And I like the area anyway, but then the game is the game. It's just a unique feel. It's kind of a... Hard thing the stadium describe. stadium was nice too. and the stadium's nice oh yeah because i mean it, it's brand new you know it's like a two two three year old yeah. stadium i mean and the technology in the field is unbelievable yeah i the, saw a lot yeah of the fact that they that. roll out the actual you know real grass pitch and yeah. then bring up the artificial turf but that's not what they do at wembley it's the same one Correct. and then you you know you always have these questions it's like weird grass. Slicker yeah, grass, weird grass right the kicker is always actually that was a topic of conversation and not only just for the kickers but for the players and you do see people slip um you know playing at wembley stadium this didn't have that feel to it. No, I mean, it was just a standard artificial turf, artificial. so it was good. It was what people are used to playing on here in the U.S. And I'll just say, from the entrance to the media workroom to the press box, it is a very short walk. It's all, like, right in line. So this is obviously, selfishly speaking, but yeah. that was really nice. All right, so here's the deal, was. okay? So yes. you, uh, let's just get uh, five, seven, eight years down the road. You've played in a lot of stadiums. Mm -hmm. uh, you take a stadium like that, Wembley Stadium, these world-class stadiums, Right, uh, outside of here, you take uh, what I would say is a world class stadium. We haven't been to LA or Vegas yet. We'll be there later in the year for LA. Uh, we've seen what they've done down at Miami, and that's probably more the idea what they're going to do in Jacksonville because it won't be a brand new stadium. Uh, it'll be more of a big renovation, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And at Atlanta is is one of the newer stadiums that we've been to. Uh, well, did you go to the Super Bowl? Or we were just there that week, right? Yeah, you were just there that week. So that week, yeah. So I didn't actually go inside. You didn't Super go inside. Bowl, yeah. So, but we've been. Wasn't to the media party inside the dome? It might the have been. That, that would have been a hard feel. Was at the aquarium. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking yeah. of a different one. The aquarium remember. was awesome, actually. Yeah, yeah, that was great. I think I'm, I'm thinking of SEC Media Days. Don't yes, me. yes. Yeah, uh, cool. So anyway, so if many you could media take, parties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think uh, the Jags will take some practices? inspiration from, obviously, L.A. right now is like this $2 billion stadium, and it, everybody says it's like, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. But when they do renovate, throw the <laughs> renderings out there, all that stuff. Like, where the inspiration? Uh, is it a little bit of Miami? Is it a little bit of L.A.? Is it a little bit of a place like Tottenham? That Because the Jags in, in this stadium would like to host a variety of events, over, from concerts to football. To, that's the way these things are made now. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see where they get their inspiration from, I guess, is my overwhelming quick point. Yeah, I, I personally think it's going to be mostly from Miami. Um, yeah. Now, you, you take the cool stuff that you see in the other ones, and then you use the practical stuff you see in Miami to make it make sense for for the bank. Uh, just because we, we, you know, I grew up in Joe Robbie Stadium going down there year after year for Marlins games, never for Dolphins games, funny enough, but always for Marlins games when they used to play there back in the day in the early days of the Marlins. And even then, it was just kind of like, man, the stadium's meh. Now, granted, it was a, a giant stadium hosting baseball games, and it was an awful, awful venue for baseball. Um, but I, I really like what they've done with that roof to make it make sense for that community and look forward to the day that that is added here at the bank. Well, it's just you got to think of what? you got to think of players. you yeah. got to think of the actual the headquarters being there mm -hmm. because it will be different than a lot of stadiums where a lot of places just go play their games well, there. This so, play, they're going to operate out of the performance center. I was going to say, so much of the cool stuff, the new stuff, I think, is going to go in that performance center. And I think the smart stuff, the practical stuff, is going to go in the stadium as yeah. far as making that work. If they do rebuild the stadium, do you think we see, like, a retractable roof? I don't know if we'll see retractable. I think to Stewart's point, you'll see what you... That's why, like, the Tottenham stuff makes sense. If it works over there with their weather and it works in Miami with their weather, yeah. uh, I think... I think the Jags will probably do something in between, whatever the modern way to do that is in six... You got to remember now, we're talking probably six, seven, eight, maybe yeah. even up to ten years down the road. Things will even change from, from now till then. But remember, the Jags were one of the first to actually... Like, I still believe, I, I think, and I have no idea if this is true... But I think Dolphins 
kind of stole the concept from the Jags. I remember it in the rendering. Because right when, it was like first or second year of renderings, like rendering in this season. big picture yeah. thing, that they, remember they put oh, yeah. that roof over the stadium like and sail, one of the renderings? like a sail on it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it felt more like a... Back when it was Everbank, I can see the Everbank logo on the sail that yeah. was on top of the stadium. It felt like an awning type thing, yeah, right? exactly. Um, so I kind of believe... Like the kind you roll out of your RV. <laughs> yes. Like one of those. You just roll it back in afterwards and you're good. Um, so anyway, I, I think... It'll be interesting to see where their inspiration comes from. But you said it. They'll have, it'll be different because that performance center that they're building should take care of a lot of things. By then, we could have more stuff in terms of office space and even the uh, the sales team and other p- parts. Like, there might be no offices inside the guts of, of TIAA Bank for actual everyday work. Like, you could... So see that part put more cool fan activation stuff well in then there. you could do yeah. well and be, well, what are all the places doing right like you look at dallas or something there's a lot of that on field level stuff well, those and 100, all the rest. 100 yard bars that run the entire course of this the stadium i think atlanta's got a hundred yard bar is that what it is i think so and then they got they have the the big and i think sofi has this now too right that big ribbon around yep. the yep. stadium yeah um, so it'll be really it'll be interesting to see when we get to that point where because we've been to many of these well, the and we've been to the new ones. It's been cool to see the development of this kind of field side luxury suite that is very open and allows you to mingle but see the game and do a little bit of that. I mean UNF adding it that's it's yeah. so cool to see it at that level and think that it, it's permeated all the way down to you know uh, mid major college level for a basketball arena to have that sort of amenity be able to be an option there to think that, yeah, they're going to do some cool things with, with the stadium and, when, and when I they do, do this think, upgrade. And I think, like, the, the Jags have been lamping, uh, you know, remember Lamping built MetLife, right? So he knows this stuff re- really well. Mm-hmm. And and uh, he kind of came up with what I would, I think Daytona put it into real play with the neighborhoods and the concourse stuff and Daytona not all one, seating. Yeah. Um, but they more places to congregate, what I would call like these little cul-de-sac areas, as I think, and that you just have groups that don't want to sit there for three hours. But the Jags did that with the pool area and the uh, the cabanas Both and, and those yeah. things. So, yeah. I mean, they tried to create a little bit of that. And now we've seen this real move toward this um, field-level stuff, which I got to be honest with you, we've been to a lot of them, like Dallas and, and all the rest, and it's kind of cool that they get to be so close field-level. But I don't know what the hell they see. Yeah, I mean you're blocked out not by a great view. It's like, just for the experience. It's just to say you did it. Like, yeah, because like, I don't, I don't mind by the team. I don't mind standing in front of them if I have a camera. Sorry, sorry, folks. But if yeah, you, yeah. you want to show, if yeah. you want to see, go up a couple rows and go sure. go sit in the stands. Yeah, I never understood it. There's yeah. so much of that mm-hmm. right there, field level, and I think it's cool pregame and all the rest. But I don't understand it during the game. Yeah, I mean they have TVs. I'm sure like in well, the bar. It's yep. just yeah, it's like being sweet, you know. Yeah, I guess if you're in that kind of, and by the way, the Jags don't have enough suites. Like, they, they really don't have, like, if you look at these other stadiums, that's where the money's at, right? And that's where the experience is at. And mm. the suite is more about the mingling and having a few pops and food and all that stuff right at your disposal. And you do watch it on these big TVs just as much, I think, as you sit there and watch. Mm. So but, to your point, but, um, mm. I would just not want it. Like, if I could pick a seat in at Dallas's stadium, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want one of those field-level ones. It's, it's oh, kind of no, cool, like, for, for sure. the pregame, it's, but I want to move up to see the game. Well, and also, if we're in Las Vegas, I probably wouldn't want to have one of the club seating things, like the club inside the stadium. But some people are just, you know, they want to go for the experience more than actually the game. And I'll, I'll say this about Jacksonville and its stadium situation. One thing that all these other places do not face is having to keep the same seating number for Florida Georgia. I know it's a topic that's come up this week. And, you know, the fact that the city is having to pay back money to these two schools because of... Uh, having less seats in this year's game. Yeah, 6,000 less seats. 6,000 less seats means $400,000 for each school, by the way. Is that the dollar I'm amount? I'm pretty sure it? I saw that on a report from X News Jacks, uh, which is a lot of money. It might be for both, but so to, I saw each. the 6,000 story. The 6,000 for the Florida Georgia game coming up next Saturday. That has nothing to do with COVID and all that. It's more just from a structure standpoint. They couldn't get them in? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure. Go check out actionnewsjacks.com for the yeah, whole story. Because I saw like just some of the headlines of it, but ben, I didn't ben know exactly. That, right? Yeah, I saw some emails going back and yeah. forth, too. You think and I just Florida haven't got to Florida Georgia yet in that respect. <laughs> you think your Florida fans are going to show up for this one? I hope so. I, I yeah. think, I mean, I think the crowd will be 50% blue. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. 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 No. Okay. No. I, hey. Okay. Hey, at 6 o'clock? Might yeah, okay. Be a different story. I was going to say, okay. three, from 3 30 <laughs> to the you. start of the fourth quarter, it might be a little different. So might be you. a different story. I don't yeah. know. I don't believe that. We're going to talk a lot about that next oh. week, but I don't believe that. I'll, that's be, I'll be in Seattle, so I won't. Uh, you won't, won't miss anything, most likely. Um, 
Uh, real quick, we're Friday night blitz, of course. We've got the blitz scoreboard Can't show. Wait, yeah. We've got some really good games tonight. Yeah, and we really our game are. of the week's tomorrow, Reigns Rebolt. Yes. But we've got some good ones tonight. Which is kind of a cool thing that we're getting a chance to honor Reigns and Rebolt because, you know, so often we make our game of the week on Friday night because it drives a lot of our content for the show. Uh, this year we decided, all right, we're going to give it to what is one of the best, if not the best, high school robberies in the state of Florida. And that's the Northwest Classic for the 52nd edition between Reigns and Rebolt. As always, they play Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. 3. 3 o'clock this year? 3 this year. 3 this year. And there will not be a seat available. So if you... It's if you, an awesome game. Yeah, it is so go cool. Go to it if you haven't seen it. It's so cool. And then you go and you tailgate beforehand. It's, it's almost like a small college atmosphere as far as uh, the game day atmosphere goes. So uh, that's a big one on Saturday. But we got a ton of really good games tonight. Ed White and Baker County essentially playing for a district championship, albeit that one. Oakleaf and Bartram Trail, the Bears coming off that huge win a week ago yeah. against Creekside. Oakleaf needs to win. Oakleaf needs to win that one. Otherwise, Riverside Bartram, and Trinity. Riverside and Trinity, no district title on the line, but two really good defensive teams going head-to-head. And, yeah, there's, there's a ton of really fun ones on the schedule tonight, so I'm looking forward to buttoning up this show here and uh, getting us ready to go. As I'm I'm on a short week, as they say. Yes, uh, you are. Welcome back. Uh, got, got back home at like 1.30 in the morning. So Friday night blitz Away tonight, we go. 10.30 on Fox 30, 11.15 on CBS 47, Fox 30. We have the Blitz scoreboard show at 9. Kevin Sullivan will join us at 5.30, so more high school talk. Let's get some NFL talk right after this. Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690. Media. I never lost trust in the process, you know. Coming from, you know, the fishing boat, you know, I always dreamed of playing in the, in the NFL, you know, just playing in the, the AAF. At the same time, I always dreamed of getting here and just being able just to, um, just being able just to be on this team is, is a blessing. And like I say, man, it's, it's always a dream come true just to, to be here and just to be able to play, you know, and start and just come out and, and help the team win. No, that's, that's the best feeling. Helping my team win, too. Helping my team win. Wait, who was that? Who do you think it was? I thought it was Darren Johnson. It was. Talking about two different teams. Someone's talking about a fantasy team. Somebody's talking oh, about the team. Yeah, I'm talking about my team like fantasy football. Oh. Are the Browns your team now? No, I just picked oh. them. Oh, I got you. I yeah. think some people might have went, oh, really? Oh, for sure. We, we definitely did do that, yes. Isn't it funny how the league commissioner somehow ends up with Dearness Johnson and he you know, okay, gets man. like 20 points? You know what? First of all, he was on the waiver wire. So, you know, check your waiver yeah, wire. Yeah, but how did, you get, but how did you, get you get in front of me on the waiver order? That's how, it ha- that's how it works. Do you know how I got in front of you? Your Be- team's worse. No, because you picked in front of me. No, your team's worse. In the draft, you picked in front it of me. It changes every week. But if you've already exhausted your waiver wire pickup, which you have, then I'm in front of you. Mm. Should have drafted she, better. She, she, this is how the NFL uh, works, first, okay, Casey. Should have drafted better. Okay. Like so I haven't made hey. one waiver wire transaction. You know why? Because my damn team is pretty good. There you go, bud. I'm a good GM. There you go, man. Good drafter. There you go, man. Good drafter of players. Who's on your hey. team? I don't even know. Hey, exactly. Casey, man. Tom I, Brady. I don't know what to tell you, okay? Because, first of all, last time I checked before the season even started, you were in the parking lot. We were in the club of the ESPN 690 <sighs> Fantasy Football, and you were in the parking lot. You were rocking Crocs, a tall tee, and a starter hat. No way you're getting in the club, right? But what did I do out of the kindness of my heart? I went to Rich Jones, had to have the chit-chat with him. Nicest yeah. dude in the world. Doesn't Happy talk birthday, to me. Rich. Doesn't talk to me anymore now because I cut him from <laughs> fantasy football. So we have a little bad blood now, which is, it sucks for me because that's the guy you want on your side, but he's upset. And what did I do, Casey? I I went in the parking lot from VIP. I grabbed you myself and said, hey, dude, come in the VIP section with me. I, you were in crowd. It's all right, dude. It's all right. I'm going to get you in. I'm going to get you in. I snuck you through the back door, and now you're in VIP. And now you're in VIP popping bottles with me, and you're still <laughs> upset about it. So I don't know what to tell you, man. All right? I got Dearens Johnson fair and square. You just got to deal with it. Are you guys playing each other this week? You better believe it. Hey, <laughs> big, big day for Darren Johnson. 146 yards rushing, one touchdown. Did he have any receptions? Uh, Did he have any receptions or PPR? <laughs> oh, two of them. I mean, at 23 yards receiving. <laughs> Go on, Dearn. Is that how you pronounce I, don't know, I can't pronounce his name. Dearn's, I think you did. Dearn Johnson? Dearn's. Yeah, I love it, man. So let's see. How did you do it yesterday? Hey, I did all right, though. You oh, know, 23.8 points. Oh. Hey, who's got the more wins, me or Austin? Uh, let me check. I, I, have, I don't check this very often. Yeah, please hey. do. Oh, Brent's in first place. That's cool. Yeah. We don't um, care about Brent. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, where you're mac and cheese, you're in yeah. second place at four and two. Yeah, where's Austin Lane? Austin Lane, uh, where are oh, you're in my division, you're behind me. You're behind three, you. and three. three and three. Three and three, but I'll tell you what, man, I'm coming Tied up for though. second. Three and three right now, yeah. And I'll tell you what, I mean, if my RB3 is putting up <laughs> 23.8 points a game, Casey, we'll see what you got from uh, me, man. It's gonna make it so much sweeter when Khalil Herbert, my RB, let's count one, Who's two, that again? three, Who does four, he play for? Five, six. He's my seventh running back Who's that, that I've had to play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's going to yeah. run all over. I don't oh. even care who they're playing. Oh, yeah. That's why he plays for Scott. He plays for Scott. Who are they playing, though? Any uh, good defensive line? Tampa Bay? <laughs> hey, you know what Vita Bay is going to say? Yeah. Thanks for playing. Come again. Nah. Not going to happen. Casey's won two in a row. Casey's good. And look at my bench. Casey's good. Look at my bench. It's all her people. I played. I suffered through Odell Beckham Jr. yesterday. I only got 3.3. That's okay. I'll be all right. I'm playing Coos, I think. No, no. I'm playing Marcel Robinson. Have, uh, By the way, our league, we yeah. have 10. I just checked the standings for the first time, and we're into, like, week six or seven or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, we, we, everybody is between four and two and two and four. Yeah. All 10 teams, pretty close race. Ooh, You're Weber playing Elijah game. Moore? Yeah, I, I just didn't feel like going to the waiver wire. Got to give Elijah a chance. Do what you gotta is do, he man. healthy? <laughs> see, yeah. This is, this is, this is, see, that, that, that goes no, to show you just how impressive this fantasy football league even is. Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, you just got to. Get a little lucky in fantasy anyway, right? Like you it did last night. Luck. It is a little luck. <laughs> a little luck, yeah. It is a little luck I mean, sometimes. Johnson does go for a, I mean, I'm undefeated on Thursday nights. That's all I care about. No, you are. You definitely are. I, you guys I, laughed I at me loss. at the over-under a couple weeks ago. Boom. Won it. You guys laughed at me You guys laughed, at, guys laughed at me about the Browns last night. Boom. Won it. Mm-hmm. It's a stupid game. I don't know who came up with it, but it's stupid. Mm-hmm. Fantasy football? No, just football. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think we're in Casey's head a little bit. I think I so, I mean, man. he's like four and three on the Thursday I mean, night hey. football. He's like, I suck at this. Hey, four and three, I actually, you'd be winning money. I got I got Rich Jones at home right now waiting to come back to the club. So you just tell me when, Casey, and we can get you out of here. If it's going to be that big of a deal. <laughs> you just tell me when, man. I assume I'm going to be forced to leave once I win. No, actually, you're, you're going to be the commissioner from now on. So that's and what wait, you... And guess what? What? We're going to have an IR spot. Cool. Maybe two. Cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's what <laughs> you... Ten of them. So he was not mad about, like, another fantasy well, league on the IR spot. He was mad at you he, about he's that. He's mad at my fan. He's mad how... I, you have six bench players. If one of those players is hurt on the bench, then put him there. You know? Like, yeah, but you, five of my guys are hurt and well, one's on by. Well, Casey, then don't draft injury prone dude. <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Okay? Like uh, what do you want me to say to that? I mean, you have Michael Th- okay, you have Michael Thomas. Yep. I mean, what do you think was gonna happen there? I knew that. Okay. I had that I had that plan going in. Okay. David Did, Montgomery? He's show me, first show me a complete season for David Montgomery. It's not show me year, a complete David season. Yeah. yeah. Show me a complete season. Logan Thomas has Logan Thomas played three games in a row I ever in his career. I have absolutely well, no you idea. Yeah, do your homework, Casey. Has he? I'm guessing not. Nah, it's been, it's been sketchy. Uh, can uh, the Jags play the Broncos and Texans again? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know they'll play the Texans again, yeah. uh, but it's unbelievable. Sometimes it's the weirdest thing, right? The schedule. Like when it comes out, you're like, all right, Houston. You're right, Denver. Okay, got a chance, right? I mean, Houston's for sure. Denver, we'll see. Um, then you, whoever else was in there, you, you know, in the last, in the first six games uh, from Arizona to obviously Miami and the rest. And uh, Miami actually looked like it would be a difficult game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cincinnati, you're like, well, we'll see. Maybe we get Cincinnati. But now you go back and you look at it and the way those teams played, they were 3 0 at the start for, for Denver. They don't look very good right now. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater's a guy who looked like. Out here, and I understand Jackson made a lot of quarterbacks look good, but mm-hmm. this does not look like the Teddy Bridgewater, not only that played in Jacksonville, but the first few weeks of the season. Now, there are injury concerns there are. with him. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, he had the concussion, and mm-hmm. um, and Houston played six good quarters, and they all came in the first game and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, played a little better against the Patriots, too, so I guess we shouldn't say just six. But remember, they played the Browns really tough in the first half, too. Mm-hmm. I think they led the Browns in week two. Uh, so... It's almost like, hey, could you play the Rams and the Bills in week one and two, get absolutely thumped, and now can we replace the Broncos and Texans now that the Jags feel a little bit better about themselves? Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny how the NFL schedule works. I mean, 3-0 oh Denver to 3-4 and four Denver. Uh, Houston, who looks now like the last couple of weeks, that team that everybody thought they were going to look like. Uh, that's The NFL's weird, and that's why I say don't – like. One and five isn't going to turn into uh, eleven and six for the Jags, but the Jags still could kind of find themselves and get in a little bit of a rhythm. That's kind of what teams do in the course of a season. And sometimes the bad teams or not so great teams do it for 
maybe a three to five week stretch, mm -hmm. the good teams can really turn it on and find themselves. Like Kansas City might find themselves at some point and, and just play really well. But sometimes the schedule doesn't make, didn't look as bad when it started. Now I wish it was flip flopped a little bit, a little harder to begin with. <laughs> no, for sure. It's starting to turn out that some of these teams are, are who we thought they were. You know, like I wasn't sold on Denver to start out the season. I mean, I thought Teddy was going to be an upgrade from Drew Locke, and he, yeah. he possibly is, but it's hard to tell when you're injured. You're playing, you know, I mean, he's not playing 100%. Baker Mayfield is such as well. Um, so, you know, it's so early on in the season. We've we got to remember this. There's 17 games this year. Talk to me when we're... In the, in the heart of November yeah. of what these teams look like and what they're doing because that's when things start to shake out a little bit. That's when we when know. teams start to go on some winning streaks here. You know, it's yeah. interesting. Two things, though. One thing about Denver that doesn't have me sold, and, and I know he's I think he's a pretty good guy. You played for him, but Fangio, to me, I, I was surprised they even kept him this year. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought uh, Chain, I don't think he's going to get it done. I think he's kind of proven that. I mean, he started off well, but, again, their schedule was pretty weak in the beginning, uh, including the Jags and the Giants. Uh, I forget who that third game might have been, the Jets. I think it was. And so their schedule was really weak in the beginning. I, just not that good. It's funny. I was telling Ty last night. I was like, you know, because I, I think Buck and, and Aikman were talking Teddy Bridgewater. And they're like, well, he was, uh, uh, you know, obviously Minnesota and then went to, um, where'd he go? Oh, New Orleans and then Carolina and then here. And I'm like, man, Teddy Bridgewater's played playing pretty good for somebody. Nobody wants him. Like, he's played pretty good football at times. For a guy that nobody seems to really want to stick with. And then next play, interception in the end zone. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I mean, I think with Teddy Bridgewater, though, like, he, he earned his street credit in New Orleans. He when did. He won, what, five games? I was or five, six no. games? Or six, yeah, One five of them games. right here. Yeah, for sure. So, like, I mean, yeah, and I get you probably had a loaded roster. You had a lot of weapons. But still, like, that, that means something in the NFL when you win five games. doesn't matter who yeah. you are as a quarterback. So, like, that to me... This increased his stock where it's like if, if you want to get a guy who can maybe be a game manager, maybe a little bit of an upgrade, go with Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, that's a good good way to put it, right? Yeah. A uh, little bit of an upgrade over the... Drew Locke, I uh, think. Yeah, I guess. But I, th I feel like they thought about going to Drew Locke in yesterday's game. I, I would say I'd rather have... Here's a good one, really. In that game last night, would you rather have Teddy Bridgewater playing for you through the whole season or like a Case Keenum, who, by the way, has been a very good backup. Uh, I should say very good, a pretty good backup, a pretty reliable guy. Mm -hmm. Or would you have, rather have a Ryan Fitzpatrick? So I give you those three guys. Which one are you taking? Are they 100% all healthy? Yeah. you got a, you got a bridge season, okay? Um, uh, you're going to sit your quarterback down because you have Trey Lance as your quarterback, and you don't think he's yeah. ready. And you can have Bridgewater, Keenum, Ryan Fitzpatrick, healthy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Who do you want? I'm still taking Teddy. You would? Yeah. Over, I mean, I, I don't think you would take Keenum, but I was thinking Fitzpatrick. No, because Fitzpatrick, he's up and down, man. Like, yeah. he, it's like riding a roller coaster with that dude. Like, he, you know, you have three games of Fitz Magic, and all of a sudden it's like five interceptions in one game. And then you, now what do you do? So I think in terms of consistency, in terms of being a bridge guy, um, where you just kind of want to be even keel, and yeah, maybe not the best, but not the worst, I'd probably take uh, Teddy. And just with Case, I don't know too much about him. You know, it's the unknown with that. And if you're just looking for a season where you have to maintain, I'd probably take Teddy Bridgewater. Do you think if Teddy Bridgewater never got hurt, he would have been good? Like, better? Like, is is this the guy that we've seen, the, the guy that can win five games on a good Saints team? The guy that, I think he played pretty good football, okay football for Carolina. They just said, hey, we're going to go with Sam Darnold and a young gun. The guy can do a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. uh, Teddy Bridgewater is limited in some areas, no doubt. But do you think he would have been the guy somewhere or would he have turned into a case keenum mitchell trubisky ryan fitzpatrick anyway even if he had stayed healthy i mean you're talking about a guy who came off a pro bowl year back in 15 and then 16 you know just gets hurt and then yeah. 17 in practice yeah. yeah and then 17 you know it was a throwaway season as well I mean, to me, that had something to do with it, Brent, because you're talking about, you know, your, your younger years, and those are some of the most pivotal in terms of forming yourself as a quarterback. And when you, me when you make the first two years, play at a, a Pro Bowl level, go 11-5, and five, and you hit, hit up the Pro Bowl, and then those next two years you're out, yeah, I, I think anybody would, would, you know, fall a little bit in terms of their production and in terms of their capabilities. Yeah, I think Bridgewater, in my opinion... Again, you mentioned Olivia, a little above a game manager. He's a fantastic leader. Like, I think people are drawn to him. I think he really can, if you look at some of the sideline stuff earlier in the year, you even Von Miller, 
is talking highly of him on that stuff. And I think that is him. I think if you go back, I think people, he's a really good dude and, and I think has some tremendous leadership skills. I just think in today's NFL, when we're seeing guys just sling it from every arm slot and have crazy arm talent and Josh Allens and even a Trevor Lawrence who can run and throw and all this stuff, I think he's limited. I think that's the word that comes to mind for Bridgewater. Yeah. He's just limited. So he's only going to take you so far. Uh, he just seems like that gap guy or a very, very good backup uh, in a pinch. Uh, but I just don't think he's ever going <clears> to <throat> take you all the way there, you know? Yeah. Uh, Browns with a heck of a win, though. Yeah. Because I got everybody out. Very and, impressive. And that was a good win. And I think you show off your coaching skills a little bit in that setting. And well, I think that Stefanski line, did that. I and they're good. Yeah. They pushed him around. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about it. And Von Miller didn't play the second half either. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. The Cooper, Jonathan Cooper, he was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the uh, Broncos yesterday. All right, we'll be back. Action Sports Chats on ESPN 690. Uh, you still celebrating the Jags win. Don't have to worry about the Jags. It's a stress-free Friday here at Action Sports Chats on ESPN 690. I think uh, I'm pretty even-keeled guy, so going into it, it's just going to be another day at the office. Um, but trying to stay composed and, you know, going on the road in a hostile environment, I think it's important for us as a staff to, uh, you know, keep even-keeled, and um, there's going to be a lot of high and lows in that first game. I thought it was baseball playoffs, and then it was the first game. What's the first game? You sent it to me. I sent that to you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's going to be like minus five points. You can't get this one right. You know what it is? No, not, oh. I, I didn't really listen to it. I'm just saying if you send it to him, you can't get it. Yeah, it's not the best. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it's not, a good look. not the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not no, a good look. Now I'm going back through my text messages to Casey. <laughs> Try email. Oh, this email. isn't good, by the way. This isn't, this isn't a good Casey, play it one more time, please. Uh, sure, I can. It's Friday, Brent. We can play a game here. We can do whatever the hell we want. You better believe it. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I'm pretty even-keeled guy, so going into it, it's just going to be another day at the office. Um, you know, trying to stay composed and, you know, going on the road in a hostile environment. I think it's important for us as a staff to, uh, you know, keep even-keeled, and um, there's going to be a lot of high and lows in that first game. Hmm. I send a lot of emails because I'm looking back apparently, through cases. Apparently you do. I send emails. This must have been, like, earlier in the week. No. Was today? Yeah, I'll find it. <laughs> All right, well, who is it? Literally hours ago, huh? You're going to tell us who it is? In case I'm finding the it. email first. In case he doesn't know either. Oh. He doesn't know. He I don't think anybody knows who this is. 11, 10 oh, oh, this is the Iceman. Yep. Oh. Ah, it's the Iceman. Okay. That's what it was. I did send that. You're right. Uh, I was thinking like I was thinking ba I had baseball in my mind because it felt the like a postseason like pitcher well, type of thing. I was thinking golf until they said team and everything. I'm like, okay, well then it's not that. <laughs> hey, listen, there's a lot going on, man. I'm not mad. Uh, you don't have to explain yourself. Not as mad as a fantasy football segment about a half hour ago. Well, that's crap. That got mad. <laughs> and I will keep defending that because it's wrong, and then I'm going to beat you, and then hey, I'm going to let you know about hey, it on Monday. If you're going to start whining about it, take it to the Relevant app, okay? <laughs> we're, we're all good over here. Appreciate that's, that's it. R-E-L-E-V-N-T, by call, the way. The call. Relevant app. Download it for some more um, fantastic content like fighting fantasy leaguers. I'll see you there, Casey. I'll be there. <laughs> Bring the gloves. Uh, and we will have more content on the relevant app, so download that thing. Relevant, R-E-L-E-V-N-T. It's fun. I continue to tell people, actually, like you told, I said this story yesterday, and I'm, it's real. Fastest way to find ESPN 690 live. Boom. Relevant app. Mm -hmm. It really is. Like, even you can get us on Twitter, but you have to search my name or ESPN 690. You can get yeah. us on Facebook, but you got to search it. You can get us on YouTube. You got to, well, hopefully you're subscribed to the channel. Or obviously you can listen to the car, but I'm talking if you're not in the car. Uh, that relevant app, boom, live radio right there. So uh, download it. It's good. Uh, you should. And we will have more content coming up on the relevant app. Jacksonville Iceman, do uh, skate tomorrow night. And uh, the season starts, believe that. <laughs> you believe it. It'll be interesting to watch the Iceman this year. Uh, Submarine Mike was over at uh, String Sports Brewery yesterday, and he's a big Iceman fan, season ticket holder, brings the whiteboard every, every game. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about their roster. But their commitment from the Rangers and being a part of that organization is like night in uh, – I don't want to say night and day because that sounds like it's bad on Winnipeg, but uh, it's different, mm -hmm. and they can feel it. And, and it's like a uh, system – thing that they run whether you're the rangers you're the ahl you're the echl and how that will translate to the ice and how good they could be on the ice we'll see uh but i'm kind of interested to see that hockey season is here jacksonville iceman will open at home next week 
uh, but they hit the road first, and that starts uh, tomorrow night. Some more on the Jacksonville Heisman in the uh, next week. Next week's going to be a busy week around here. <laughs> the Florida-Georgia Jazz get back to action. A lot of high school football, of course, and uh, uh, the Icemen get rolling as I'll well. save my Iceman notes till next week. Yeah, please do. PXG uh, match play championships uh, next week too in St. Augustine. Uh, do you have some Iceman notes? Yes. Well, we got four minutes. What I'll you save got? them till next week. Why? Because you said save them till next week. Nah, go ahead. You're ready. What you got on the Iceman? Yep. They should be good. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your notes. Let's go. We got three minutes on the Iceman. They'll love it. I gotta find my notes. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, no, they'll be Is he good. okay today? No, he's okay. okay. I no, mean, why did you do this to him? What I this do is all what? because of you in fantasy football. I didn't do it. Hey, it's been like that for a while, man. All right, I, I didn't tell do you anything. the whole last segment, don't know anything we said after the fantasy, and I looked through the waiver wire. Just all red. And I, no, I'm just finding guys that are going to go off. He, oh, good. Good, man. He's on a mission Have at now. It, dude. Have at he's it. on a mission. It's all you. Uh, I, I can't wait to see how this turns out. I can't either. But anyway, the Jacksonville Iceman quality, quality program, obviously, like you said, the Rangers taking over. They are going to have one of the Rangers top-ish prospects, if you will. Hockey's very hard to understand how prospects and whatnot work, but how yeah. it works in hockey is it depends on what contract you are on. If the Jacksonville Icemen sign you to a contract, first of all, congratulations. But second of all, that means you are not on the con on contract with the New York Rangers, so everything changes. The Icemen will have a guy on a Rangers contract. That is Jake Elmer. So the Rangers are anticipating that he might become something, and that might start in Jacksonville. Uh, Aaron Nazarian, who obviously was on the team last year, 51 points, is on an Iceman contract. But as you said, Brent, the Rangers want to be more involved than Winnipeg was. So you put up 51 points again, you might get somebody to notice. And uh, they brought in a new guy, 22. Well, they brought in a lot of new guys. 22 years old. He's from not America because his name is Vladislav Mikulchuk. <laughs> like that. Not, Amer not America. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a great classification. Not not from the <laughs> north or the south, probably. <laughs> it's from not with, with a name like that. <laughs> but like he's it. 22, he's young, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what that can become because if you watch the NHL, you know that guys that are not from America are the stars in the league. That is true. And the Rangers doing pretty well right now, actually. 3-1-1 one, and one yep. to start the season off. So they're looking good as well. So that's hockey talk. That is hockey talk. That's great. But I'm not sure you've been following the NHL at all, but there's been some weird things happening so far. I haven't followed them a bit. Remember I talked about how the Buffalo Sabres were a poverty franchise and trash? Yes. Well, they're, they're undefeated right now. Really? Yep. I saw Michael's name uh, tre uh, trending the other day. What yeah. happened with him? I don't even know. Is same it, is, old, same Are old. they going back and forth still? Yeah. And they're undefeated. Well, undefeated. I think... In I, spite of him, I guess. I think the trending there was people were making fun of him because they're undefeated and he's not playing. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, they're 3-0 three, they're three right now. So they, they probably get to the point where they've turned on the player a little bit up there in Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, you think so? Yeah. Yeah, they love the... I mean, them people love the Sabres. You don't love Jack Eichel. Oh, no. Well, they, you no, start no, off so though, here's the like thing. Jack Eichel because, yeah. again, they start off on Jalen Ramsey's side around here, and then when Jalen Ramsey has the back injury and is gone, now they're on the organization side and hate Jalen Ramsey. See, I think with Casey, yes, they do support the Sabres. I think ownership, though, they might not be the most fond of them That's right fair. Now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, speaking of, like, Ben Simmons. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of back injuries. Yep. Did I see... Like, this thing's going to play out a long time, right? That's not good. That's a weird... Is it really good? You think it's going to play out? Because he showed up and he went back home again. I know. He's I selling his houses him. and stuff. You wouldn't trade him? No. Make but him suffer. Maury like is that. the guy in Philly now, right? The old Houston guy? Yeah. Well, he, I think he said buckle up. He's like, this isn't go ending anytime soon. I'm Legend. pretty sure. Okay, so he I'm pretty sure me so. a little bit, right? Yeah. What do you guys think about this trade? Dame Lillard uh, for Ben Simmons and two first-round draft picks. I would do it if I was Portland. Uh, Philly. No, if I was Philly. Yeah. Would you do it if you're Portland? No. No? All right. Dame Will. No. No, I would. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, are you going to win Two a championship first round with, picks. with just Dame? Yeah. First round picks and Simmons. And by the way, this is I from my brain. It. This isn't from anything I read. It was just you're from my definitely brain. not going to win a championship with Ben Simmons. Yeah. I, I mean, just you feel like your ben, way. ben Simmons is a weird thing to me. Like, it just feels not, I don't know about toxic, but he feels like what you just said. If I have Ben Simmons on my team, I don't think I can win. I just that's, yeah, a, no, weird, for sure. that's a weird thing to attach to a player, right? I just Russell Westbrook yeah. has a little bit of that to him. True. But I don't get how he's putting on this charade right now because, like, you, you aren't a top five point guard in the league. I know. So what do we, like, if it's Jalen Ramsey, yeah, it's one thing. But this would be, like, Chet Quarterman. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, man, like, okay. have at it. Like, well, yeah. good luck, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's a weird thing right I mean, he's now. good, but, you know. Um... Uh, we'll get to your Kyrie Irving topic in a little bit as well. We'll see. Uh, that's coming up. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Want to know the secret to a great night's sleep? It's purple. 
Why? Because only Purple mattresses have the Gel Flex grid. It's the reason why Purple mattresses are soft where you want it, firm where you need it, and instantly respond to movement. The Gel Flex grid flexes around pressure points to support your whole body, no matter how you sleep. Plus, the Gel Flex grid is 80% air. It breathes, so you're not too hot or too cold. Learn more about Purple mattresses and the Gel Flex grid at purple.com. Purple, reinventing sleep.